week Thursday. It was so good. We are continuing again today. Last week, I told you that a study in South Africa found that 58% of black people in the country sent money to family members monthly, even though 55% of them were themselves unable to pay their monthly bill. And I told you that what that thing is, is something called black tax. How much black tax do you pay? Black tax is B-L-A-C-K-T-A-X. Black tax. It's called a black tax because um, you feel an obligation to do it. That's what it is. It's basically money that you send to family members every month or very often to help them pay a bill, to help them stay afloat, uh, to help them pay some school fees. And it's like a tax because come rain, come shine, it comes out of your salary, it comes out of your revenue, and it feels like an obligation. Now, it's called black tax because all over the world, black people or people in black cultures are more likely to be doing it than, say, white Europeans. And there are a lot of you who are listening who are barely making enough to handle your own expenses, but you also have family who are making far less than you are. And last week, we were talking about if you pay black tax or if you receive black tax, what are you paying for? Who are you paying to? What are you paid for? Is it upkeep? Is it settling their bills? Is it for sending somebody to school? When did you start paying? Last week, we got a call from somebody who started paying as early as 18. He was 18 years old when he started to pay his own black tax. You know what? Let me play you a few calls from last week, Thursday. You'll hear their experiences. And then we'll talk about the factors that contribute to this situation for black communities. I am Sandra Ezekwesele. This is Hard Facts on 99.3 Nigeria Info. It's four minutes, well, five minutes now, past five o'clock. Here we go. Good evening. Good evening. What's your name? My name is Dennis. Welcome, Dennis. Are you paying black tax or receiving black tax? I've never received before, but over, time, over the years, I think at age 22, I started paying this. Hmm. Why? Did did I hear you say why? Yes, why? You know, it's an African thing. No, no, no. Why did did you start paying? Okay, let me just, like, for instance, my youngest senior brother, Mm -hmm. I have to invite him down from the north. He was staying with me. Mm. Then he, he was equally in school. Okay. And to date, I think I've always been of help to him in one way or the other. Okay. So I, I don't want just... And uh, the moment the, 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 the news is, or maybe they got to know that uh, maybe you have some little change, you receive calls here and there. Hmm. And if you don't give, uh, sometimes they want to see as a very wicked person. Yeah, do you know he's living large and uh, you can't call him. Even when you call him, sometimes he will not even pick your call. So sometimes uh, it's just out of fear sometimes. To me or to me, I, I'm just opening up, honestly. Hmm. Out of fear, uh, they may not go kill me. Take. <laughs> I like that. Honestly, I like that honesty. honestly believe you me. Hmm. Uh, I go make, let me just... For once, let me just even touch this person. Mm. So next time you will not call. You will just know the last time you called, I did help. Mm. You understand? Mm-hmm. So I, that is how I go out of my way to do things sometimes. Mm. And I cannot even mention because I, I will do it myself sometimes. I, early part of this year, I have to uh, print my statement of account from January to you know the numbers of banks I run. And I, just, I will just cycling these names. This is what I sent to this person these days. So, and... Uh, thank God with the modern the internet banking, mm. the purpose is always tied to sometimes, oh, they're wondering. Sandra, you'll be so surprised that this year, last year, I recorded 590000 That you spent on black tax? Yes. The one for one thing or the other, for one thing or the other. Oh. And these ones are mostly for upkeep, for medical bills sometimes, mm. you know? And I called one of my sons, I showed him, I said, look at all these ones going to his family. 
And I remember one of my brothers telling me, look, if you listen to family problem, you mm. become poor. Do you think he was right? Sandra, family problem can drain one and make one poor sometimes, so I won't lie to you. So do you think... Especially so, so you are a businessman. So do you think that people who put themselves first are wrong to do it? Whether they are wrong... Mm. Do you think they are wrong to do it? People who say, oh, more, I can't keep myself, and they just don't attend to extended needs and focus on themselves and their family, do you think they are wrong to do it? <clears throat> Sandra, honestly, they are not wrong. But for me, mm. people like me, sometimes, even when I have not meet the home front demand, mm. I will still have to, okay, let me just give. Let me just give. And you know we have the mentality of bringing in God. God will bring again. <laughs> and when you are not even, you know you are a salary. If you are a business person, you won't, yes, you won't conclude. When you give, givers don't lack. You know that kind of mentality. Dami Lola in Surulere. Hello. Hi, good evening, Sandra. Good evening. Good to have you on the show. Yes, thank you. I just wanted, I just want to contribute to yes. this are issue you, are, of Are you paying or receiving? I'm actually paying. Okay. Yeah, and it's something that I've, I've found myself, like, right from my university days. Wow. Like, being a student, that's also my way, win scholarships for myself. Mm. And you just see this, your parents always disturbing you for their own share of the money. Huh. So, like, so even after graduating, getting a job, mm. as in my parents are just all over me, like, they're expecting that, oh, I sent you to school, I made you who you are. But they you didn't have to send you sleep. to school. That the, the scholarship sent you to school. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> I just think, is this part of the world? Wait, wait, first, everybody... wait. My guy, wait first. Wait, wait, wait. Now, scholarship, where they beg you the money for the scholarship from self. I still pay them school. even from the scholarship. Guy. How many are so you guys just, in the family? Um, I'm the first child. Okay. They are, I have five siblings, like, all lined up behind me. And you're the one who's catering for them? Mm. Let me say partially, because okay. they're always on my neck. And I just said that the entitlement spirit, I've just so eaten down into all of them that even if when you say you don't have, they mm. feel you're stingy, you don't want to care about them. Mm. So it's really a serious thing. So it was just, wasn't well, you know, yesterday I was still discussing with my friend. So that's why someone just contributed to this mm. show. Like, if we are not intentional about how we are working, we'll just live our life working for people. Mm. And as this old age draws near, and you just say, that, oh, you've built nothing for yourself. Mm. So I really think to solve the issue now, we have to be very intentional. Mm. You can't chase, or you can't chase them away definitely. Okay. Just know that you are, you are going to set boundaries. Mm. Okay, after paying myself, I've saved my money, I've invested. Okay, this is how much is left. Okay, this is what I have for you guys. So I think that is how we can set boundaries with this thing called black tax. Since you were 18? Yes. Since you were 18? That's a young age. Yes. What were because you that, paying for at 18? That, that, yes. Then, my, I lost my, my father then. Okay. That time I was in, I was in form four. Okay. Now, now, just as this is two now. Mm. So, my lost my father then, and I have some siblings. I was the first one. All of them depended on me. My mother depended on me. So, what will I do? I go to the farm. I farm. I sell yam. I sell cassava. I do everything to make sure that I feed all of them and I pay my school fees. From eighteen. Yes, I continued that until I left home to Lagos. When I started a job, I continued that way until this moment that I'm telling you mm. is now that I'm just getting a relief because all those, my siblings, mm. they, are, they are now on their own. I was able to establish them. Mm. They are doing well. Mm. So that's how, that's, how, that's now I can say that, yes, I'm a bit relieved as a human being. But it's still, other, other immediate families are still depending on me. Every month, this one will call me, the, the, student, the student school fees, mm. uh, my brother, this one will call me, the uncle will call me. You know, they thought maybe things are just flowing like that. But I paid all these tax for my earnings, and my earnings is not even enough for me. And that's why every month it end up without nothing. You can't even save. You can't save anything now. You don't save anything. Most of times, you cannot go out to say, okay, let me take a bottle of beer with your colleagues. Mm. You can't do that. Unless somebody call you and check it out. 
-hmm. it becomes so difficult situation because so, of so, the situation so, of this country. So why are you still doing it? If it's so difficult, you can't even save or take yourself out. Why are you still doing it? Well, you know, it, it becomes, you know, it's something that you cannot avoid. It's an avoidable situation. C can you Whether not avoid it? Yes, yeah, it's, it's an uh, unavoidable situation because you cannot you cannot sit down. Your younger sister will call you that you know that you lost the husband. Mm. The children will sit at home. They don't go to school. Can't you assist them? Yes, and you, you can the, assist them the once. Business. You can assist and them the once, but assisting them all the time. Do you do you think you can afford to do that all the time? Unless unless she she finds another means because they don't have any other things than to depend on you. Yes, but if you were not available for them to depend on, would they be all right? Would they die? That, that, which means they take that person away. Mm. But you continue to assist. Mm. Continue to assist them. Mm. That is the task you face on life. Mm. You are just going to assist to it. All right, Lawrence. So it's, only, it's only God that will help us. So, <laughs> and that's why you see some you some young men that die earlier because of all those kind of uh, Frustrations and distress everywhere. Mm. Uh, they cannot even take care, good care of themselves again than to face families, immediate families, uncles and cousins, and this and that. Mm. So right. it's a very difficult situation. Very, very difficult situation. You've heard from several people we spoke to last week, Thursday. So now I want us to take a look at some of the root causes of black tax. One of the big ones is that. Most black societies still have a lot of poverty. I mean, you heard from Lawrence. Lawrence talks about what if you have a sister that doesn't have anything she's doing and she has children. You have to be able to help. Most black societies still have a lot of poverty. The South African study that I told you about also showed that in South Africa, there is more income inequality among blacks than any other race. So that means the gap between the richest blacks and poorest blacks is wider than the same gap for white, Asian, and colored South Africans. The same gap, oh, but it's wider. And if you think about it, Nigeria also shows the same in income inequality. Some people listening to me now are the first people in their families to finish school. Some people have entire branches of their family that are in the village with no strong means of income. We all have poverty in our families, all of us. It may be as close as a sibling or as far as a distant cousin. But poverty is always there. And what do people do if they're poor and have no hope of getting ahead? They reach out to those around them for help. And if there's a poor person in every family then every family has somebody reaching out to them for help. That is what is black tax. And it's not just Nigeria and South Africa. Go to Uganda, go to Cameroon, go to Jamaica, go to the USA, go to the UK. You see this income inequality among black people to different degrees. And with it, you see a black tax. Now, the economists will tell you that the only way out of this situation is more education and um, equal employment opportunities. And when it comes to education, the black tax can be very useful. I mean, you hear stories where the parents could only afford to train one child. Remember when we talked about it? How um, if, if there was only money to train one child, do you think that you would have been the child who was trained? It was a very fantastic conversation. If you want to listen again to that conversation, uh, conversation search on our podcast, um, uh, Hard Facts with Sandra Ezekosley, the podcast, and search for that particular episode and um, listen to it. It was very, very good. But yeah, you hear of stories where the parents could only afford to train one child. That one grew up, got a good job, started training one or two siblings. Those ones also got good jobs and joined in helping uh, to train the others. And suddenly, within a generation, the whole family is well educated. But this model, it has drawbacks. First of all, the pressure. Basically, the parents have turned that young person into a third parent. You're now, you're now parent number three. Like the, young, the, the man who called us, Dennis who called, was it Dennis? I don't know. What are the callers who said he started at 18 when his father died? 
So you have parents who have turned a young person into a, a third parent. You're suddenly responsible for making sure that your younger ones don't fail in life. And we hear a lot about how that pressure goes on to cause resentment. And I wonder whether that's your story. Is it, is it a story you recognize? Were you the one who was called upon to train your siblings or were your siblings called upon to train you? How did it affect your relationship with them and how did it affect your relationship with your parents? And what do you think about the theory that this black tax is caused by high income inequalities, even in families? Again, I don't have a dog in this fight. I just want to hear your stories. 0700-993-993-993. I'd really love to hear uh, from women today. So 01465-7190. That's the number for you women. 01465-7190. So two numbers, one for men, one for women. The one for men is 700 Nine nine three nine nine three. Hello, thank you for calling us. Hello. Hello, brother. Yeah, good afternoon. Good afternoon to you. Uh, this is Mr. Mwigwe. We're calling from Ikeja. Welcome, Mr. Mwigwe. Welcome, Mr. Mwigwe. Go ahead. You're live on yeah, the show. I, I just want to contribute uh, to the topic of the day. Yes, please. Go ahead. Uh, first of all, I'm not too comfortable with the, sub, uh, the title, Black Tax. Why? Yeah, because uh, that's where we live in Africa. Okay. And nobody, nobody is taxing anybody to to do what you don't, you are not capable of doing. Well, if you feel an obligation to do it, then it's a, it's like a tax, and the only people who do it are black people. That's why it's called a black well, tax. We are blacks, and we live as black men. We live as Nigerians. We are not Europeans, and there is no way we can behave like Europeans. I don't think anyone is asking you to behave like Europeans. Yeah, so it's not a tax. It's what you willingly do on your own. Is it willingly? Is it willingly? Yeah, it's willingly because nobody taxed me to, to contribute to the upkeep of my my siblings, my younger ones. Mm. I, I grew up to know that my parents don't have much mm. because we grew up in the community. Mm -hmm. And so when I started earning income, it is natural for me to come home, buy clothes for them, contribute money to, for their own education hmm. so that we, we can help each other. We uplift each other. Hmm. And so to me, it, it's not a tax. But you know tax is a duty. I don't know. I, I think you seem to think that tax is bad. No. Tax is, is it is it bad you get, you to pay a, tax? In return for earning. Yeah. So are you not um, giving back in return for your earning? Yeah, but nobody taxed me. Nobody forced me. Nobody yes, but you, me. Yes, but you feel a duty to send yes, money to I your younger ones. Duty. I feel a duty. Uh -huh. because... That's what tax <laughs> is. Nobody is saying it's a bad thing to feel that duty. It's just called yeah, no, a term. But I remember the first time you brought this topic. You said that's the reason why we remember Paul. Yes. The research, I, I, I the research, the research has shown that what's, that's one of the reasons why we cannot build generational wealth. We cannot build generational wealth because of where we are coming from. We are third world, for you to know. We, we, we started, uh, uh, what would I put it? It's just about 50 years old or 60 years that we started doing things on our own in a civilized manner. Oh. So you don't expect to be at the same level with those who have started over 200 years ago. It's not going to be possible. This is one of the characteristics of a third world. One of the characteristics is of, of a third world is that, that you're paying taxes such as this. And I want you to know one thing. Mm. Even if everybody in the family, uh, there is no notion that everybody is rich. Do you understand? No one has said that there's any nation where everyone is rich. But if you yeah, have so few people making money and they are taking care of other people, there's a tendency they're not going to be able to build wealth that lasts for generations. And in, in those other countries you mentioned, the gap between the rich and the poor is much slimmer than in nations such as Nigeria. We agree. Uh, we are, I think we are driving the same vehicle, but your, where you're coming from is quite different. 
Okay. Since we're in agreement, let me talk to Stephanie then. Thank you very much for calling. Stephanie Magodo, how are you? Oh, hi, Sandra. Hi. I'm fine, thank you. How are you? I'm all right. Welcome. <laughs> it's really nice speaking to you. You too. Um, so, yeah, I thought I had to call in when I heard this topic because mm. it's something that re resonates so well with me. Okay. And uh, sometimes it actually feels like a curse being a black person. Okay. So just um, kind of going into my own experience of the uh, black tax, mm -hmm. to say. Mm -hmm. um, so I was very young when my father passed away. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, and then I was fostered by a Nigerian who lives in the UK okay. uh, from a very young age. Okay. And almost immediately after I land landed there, mm. the experience was out of this world. Okay. Kind of the pressure to send money home. Mm. I was the youngest of five children. Mm -hmm. So the four that come before me mm -hmm. emails every day. What are you doing there? Are you just sitting there eating McDonald's when we have school fees to pay? <laughs> Honestly, so it was constant emails, constant. And for me, it was so hard to understand because I started adopting a new way of thinking, a new way of life. And I couldn't understand that somebody who has never called me to say, have you eaten? Hmm. How are you doing? And I was having a horrible experience. The family I was living with, absolutely horrible. I slept outside on the bus many a time. Wow. But my family back in Nigeria, nobody cared to know. Nobody would ever ask me. It's kind of just, when are you sending money? Mm -hmm. And you feel the pressure also from Nigerians living in the UK. Okay. It's kind of, you're here. Mm -hmm. So, of course, you have to help your family. Never mind that all my friends were going to universities. They were buying properties. And it holds you back so much because you're taking care of people and you don't have time to invest in yourself. But but you heard from the caller before you, and he said, "Well, that's what we do, you know. That's um that that's who yeah. we are as a people, you know. It's not a, it's not an obligation, you know. It's it's how we are. We're not white people. What do you say to that?" I don't agree, to be honest with you. It's they say it's not an obligation, but kind of the fear of being ostracized from your own community mm. is so strong that it becomes an obligation even if you don't have the money i got into so much debt mm. because of trying to help my family and it's not just doing the basics it's not just trying to help so that they can pay school fees mm -hmm. it's not even trying to help so that they can eat because they had food it's once somebody is abroad it becomes more than just bare survival for your family back home yeah. they now have to live a five-star lifestyle and it's, I understand people say it's just the way that we are, it's just that, but it's so wrong, especially when you're a young person trying to stand on your feet, you're trying to understand the society that you're in, mm -hmm. you're trying to establish yourself, mm -hmm. you don't fit in anywhere, you no longer fit in with your family back in Nigeria because they think you're not doing enough, mm -hmm. you don't fit in with the new friends and the new environment that you find yourself because... Mm -hmm. None of your friends are having to do that because their parents are there. They're just focusing on their own life. Mm. And then here you are having to deal with. And one thing I would say, the older generation of Nigerians that live abroad, mm -hmm. because they have missed out so much on their own lives, having trying to help people back home, they then put that pressure on you. Right. And make you feel that you have the same obligations because it's almost kind of, well, I have to go through it. So you have to go through it as well, even though you did not even ask to be taken abroad as a child. Yeah. But do you think we have an obligation or do you think, well, we're born, you know, and we are all on our individual paths and everybody find your way. And sure, yeah. I can help when I want to help, but don't make it feel like I'm obligated to help. What do you think? Yeah. It's not an obligation in the sense that obviously they're not putting a gun to your head or anything, but it's kind well, of... Well, they kind of are, if you think about it. <laughs> they, but emotionally... They yeah, are. <laughs> it's not a literal gun, but it's still a gun, kind of. Yeah, yeah exactly. I have to so, take a break, Stephanie. I'm so sorry, but thank you for calling. No problem. Thanks for your time. Bye. So you want to feel that boost? Allow me to introduce...
Which are they? This child needs CPO. Try and take her to the hospital. I wish I explain. But it's been over two months. Don't tell me you have not heard about LSHS in Lira Ipo. In Lira Ipo? What is that? Baby, just tell me. Lagos State Health Management Agency, Lashma, has designed an affordable and quality healthcare scheme for Lagos residents. In Lera Eco, at your convenience, you can have access to antenatal, delivery, immunization, management of hypertension, diabetes, and other illnesses, family planning, and basic emergencies. Register with Lera Eco branded agents and at the nearest Lera Eco branded outlets. Pay 40,000 naira annual subscription for a family package or 8,500 naira for an individual package and start to experience peace of mind. For more information, call 0700 Ilera Eco or 0800 Ask Lashma or visit www.lashma.com. Ilera Eco, affordable and quality healthcare for Lagos residents. Women are half the population, but don't hold half the political representation. Look at your parliament, your governor's forum, even your local government council. You will not find a room half filled with women. It's time to translate our equal population into equal political power. And so on March 7th, at the Glass Ceiling Convention, let's make a plan to get it. Brought to you by Nigeria Info 99.3 FM and the Glass Ceiling with Sandra Ezekwesili. This International Women's Day, let's talk about how to take over parties, how to win primaries, how to win elections, how to protect our votes. Our guest speaker is Inse Ufot, founder of the New Georgia Project that helped flip the U.S. Senate. Our panelists include Honorable Nena Okeje, Rinsala Abiola, Kate Henshaw, Honorable Zainab Buba Galadima, Brianna Olsen, Cynthia Mbamalu, Indy Kato, Damilola Odufua. To register to attend for free, go to www.nigeriainfo.fm. Official partners, Niaga Africa, Canadian High Commission, U.S. Consulate General, and the U.K. High Commission. 99.3 Nigeria Info. Your number one station for talk. Let's talk. Having quite the conversation with you today about black tax. And I told you what black tax is. It's that money you send to family members every month. I had the greatest conversation with Stephanie, who was talking about being the youngest out of five children sent to the UK and getting there and immediately being pressured to send money back home. I wish we had time to to keep going. And I do hope she can call back so that we can talk a bit more because I have a f- uh, you know a few other questions. I also got an interesting call from Mr. Mwigwe who says um, he doesn't like the name or the term black tax. He seems to have a problem with the (laughs) tax part because Nigerians don't like to pay tax, you know. But what is tax? It's it's a duty, right? It's a good thing. Paying tax is a good thing. It's a it's it's a duty that you have. Right. Um, So it's 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 not this bad thing you do. But the reason it's called black tax is because it's mostly black people who do it. Now, Mr. Mugis says, well, that's, that's who we are. We're Nigerians. We're not Europeans. It's what we do. It's our culture, you know? And um, he, he goes on to say, well, he did it and he, he enjoyed it. You know, there's no obligation. But like Stephanie and I talked about before the break, yes, there's no obligation in the sense that they don't have a gun to your head, literal gun to your head. But there is a lot of, like, emotional pressure, you know, and, um, you know, you, you're told things like, oh, will your t- your siblings not go to school? Will your family starve? And quite frankly, your family will not starve. They cannot starve. Not while you can afford to um, take care of their needs. But then can you afford to take care of their needs? That's the question. How do we, is there a balance that needs to be struck? I, I guess that's the reason we're having this conversation. Is there a balance that needs to be struck? What do you think about the theory that the black tax prevents the accumulation of generational wealth? That's another challenge with black tax, right? So th- think about the, the graduate that I, I told you about earlier on, the one that his parents trained. You know, somebody like Stephanie who called into the show, you know, who uh, is the last born and has to send money back home, or the one that I told you about who was trained so that he could train his siblings or she was trained so that she could train her siblings. So say, for instance, she's a software engineer or she's an oil worker or she's a broadcaster like myself, right? But now she has two or three siblings to send to school. And every semester, every term, she's counting out money for school fees. She's paying rent for the ones that are in the university. She's giving them pocket money. Now you compare her to the ones that are not um, 
paying that money. Like Stephanie said, to her friends that are not paying black tax, compare both of them. You see that they're not at the same level. So her friends are saving money. Her friends are investing money. Their money is growing for them. After just a few years, they may have double or triple what um, perhaps Stephanie is able to save. Stephanie, I'm sorry, I'm using you as an example. <laughs> but yeah, you see what I'm saying? And research has actually gone into this. So I'm not just pulling this out of my bot. Research has gone into this. And the researchers say that this is one of the reasons why in multiracial societies, the black middle class is not growing as fast as the white. Black middle class people cannot save as much on average. One of the, you say that this is the main one, no? they're saying this is one of the factors. Black middle class uh, uh, um, uh, people cannot save as much on average because they're sending that money to keep their poorer relatives afloat or to pay, pay their bills. And you know that the thing with savings and investments is that they compound. You take one person who saves and you take one, another person who doesn't save. You give them the same salary and in 10 years, you won't believe that they are from the same class. That's why every time you go to one of these inspirational, motivational talks and they're telling you, save, save, which money you go save? <laughs> After paying the school fees of the entire clan and community, where will the rest come from? Which one will you now eat? Which one will you now use and take care of yourself? Buy yourself a beer, like uh, Dennis, who called into the show to talk to me. So that's it. That's black tax. That's what it's doing to people. The question is, and, and that's what I'm hoping we can talk about now until the end of the show. What's the way forward? I mean, are you going to unlook? Are you going to let your brother or your cousin wallow in poverty? Are you going to face front and let their children go uneducated? Because they're really tricky questions. I don't have the answers. I'm just, you know, allowing us to have a public conversation. Because if I have 970,000 listeners, it means that a lot of them are not calling. But they're listening and they're learning. And hopefully they're looking at ways that they can save themselves before they drown. There are no clear answers. I just want to hear what you think. How much black tax do you pay or do you receive? Because I also want to hear from those who are receiving. What do you think about the theory that um, the black tax prevents the accumulation of generational wealth? I have somebody on Twitter who disagrees. Somebody on Twitter says, I disagree with uh, uh, the... Uh, a theory that says um, paying black tax makes us poor and unable to build generational wealth. I think assisting your siblings or your family from their poor situations will even help them to build generational wealth. A rich man in the midst of poor men is a poor man. Okay, Engineer Ayodele Oluwotimi says, is this something you agree with? Let me come to the phone lines. 0700-993-993, that's for men. And 01465-7190, that's for women. Um, do you think that there's a way to balance this? Is there a balance that can be struck? How do you strike that balance? Hello, thanks for calling us. Hello. Sandra, yeah, good. Good evening. Good evening, what's your name? Yeah. yeah, let me remain anonymous. All right, that's fine. Go ahead. I remain anonymous, yeah? Okay. Um, Sandra, mm -hmm. uh, can I uh, start with... Um, okay, to start with, this is not just black people's culture. Asians are um, also into this. It's, it is also um, a culture of the Asians. Okay. So the Asians make more effort to get, instead of, instead of giving fish... Mm. They teach you how to catch the fish. Okay. Here in Nigeria, um, even as you try to teach the person how to catch the fish, he would think that you have your basket full of fish. So why should he bother? <laughs> to start with that, for for those who are capable, mm. who you know, very able people. Mm. Sandra, I want to remind you, sometime in 2019 or 20 or last year, mm. there was a... I think in your show, mm -hmm. a young girl who on Facebook proclaimed herself dead. Yes, it was last because year. Because her parents or her people depended so much on her. I think she was either 19 or 21, I don't remember. 
was it? I think it was your. It was. It was last year. It was on my show. Yeah, it was 2020. Yeah. Yes. A young girl, a young girl because, who was a yes. cleaner here in Lagos faked her death. Yes. yes. She declared herself dead. Yeah. Why? Because her people were all all on her for money. Mm. And you can't imagine that. Mm. So now. You see, I used to be in that. Let me say, if I use myself as an example, I used to be in that, in that, um, in that, uh, whatever, you know, situation. Giving, okay. Yeah. You, you were know, paying black tax. And there's some people who will put, they will, they will portray to you, they will pretend to you that without it, without you, they will die. Mm. You know. Mm. You see, until something happened, mm -hmm. I had a very traumatic. Uh, 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 experience in my marriage, okay. you know, I, separation and so on, mm -hmm. you know, and lo I lost my job, very juicy job and so mm -hmm. on and all that, so, you know, so kind of, you know, friend there says, no, you know, there's a, oh, there's no money, oh, and I was like, no money, no money, so anybody that I call, is oh, no money, I'm even, a, I'm, I'm looking for where to get, mm -hmm. you don't look for something in the pocket of somebody who is looking for something. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. so even and then it, it got to so even as I am, in fact, they left me alone. Mm. And all those who they have not died though, <laughs> they have not died. They are they have are they they some of them are even doing well now. They even better because they realize that you they had to do something for themselves. They need to pick up. You know, I had a sibling, a a, a, a younger sibling of mine who. When he graduated from school, mm -hmm. he just sat in, you know, he stayed at home mm -hmm. saying that, oh, hunger, no job, this. I said, you know, I was trying to encourage him, go mm -hmm. out, look for a job, do mm -hmm. this, do that. Mm -hmm. You know, I was encouraging him, and then I was giving him some money mm -hmm. to to take care of himself while he looked look for a job. But I realized that he wasn't really going out to look for a job. Hmm. So what he asked for me, what rather what he asked me because we was living with uh, one of my younger sisters at work. Mm -hmm. I said what he asked me to do was to buy a bag of rice, bag of beans, yam, this and that, hmm. and drop for them at home so that they will be eating. They won't go hungry. Hmm. This is somebody looking for a job, and I said I won't do that. After that, I said, eh, and then you'll be eating and stay at home. I didn't do that. Okay. So I kind of withdrew. My uh, money giving, mm -hmm. so to say, mm -hmm. because sometimes honestly, that he, and people should know that this is a sin. It's against the law of nature. Every adult, every mature man, every mature person, mm -hmm. every every adult, mm -hmm. capable, able-bodied, mm -hmm. has the capacity, has the, the what it takes to provide for himself, for him or herself. Mm -hmm. That is the law of nature. You don't deprive that person. The ability to do that by giving and giving and giving. Hmm. They say somebody, you see, you somebody had his two hands and two legs, mm -hmm. and then you give him crutches. Mm -hmm. You know why? Take away the crutches, and then the person would even if those limbs are going weak, mm -hmm. they will wake up. So this is my brother. Mm -hmm. When I didn't do that anymore, he, he sat up. Next month, two months, eh? Mm -hmm. He got a job. Oh. Uh -huh. You went out and looked for a job and got a job. Uh -huh. See, I'm not against giving, you know, you see, especially to your aged parents. Hmm. You know, look at somebody who said he started at the age of 18 and he was the firstborn. Hmm. If he was the firstborn at the age of 18, his mother should still be young. Hmm. That's what I'm thinking. Good. If his mother is was well, if his mother was well, hmm. was not sick, his mother should still be young to to to. You know, take care of herself at least. Other, sim other mm. siblings, mm. you know, do something. Not even if not enough, then he will just be helping. So please, if uh, they can, they can do what you know, criticize what I'm saying. But look, allow somebody, allow a a creature like you, a human being like you. Mm -hmm. You can help what you do. Try to help. Try to establish. Yes. But for some people, you establish, try to establish, they, they will squander the money, they'll mm. come back because they know that the source it is coming from. Mm. Uh -huh. So until you now say, look, oh, ah, it's not coming again. No. In, my own, in my own case, mm. now, they have, because they have left me alone, mm -hmm. I am, you know, they don't even know that I am, I am now, you know, 
capable again, you know, taking care of my but my money is now for me. No. Oh. Anonymous, thank you very much for calling. I've been talking to you for six minutes and uh, I'd like to take a few other calls, but I'm I'm grateful you called us. Eze and Lecky, how are you? I'm fine. Good evening, Sandra. Eze, what do you think of this theory that black tax prevents black people from bre- building generational wealth? Oh, yes. Wealth? 100, I agree 100%. Really? I agree 100%. But I, I mean, I as an individual, I've learned like if it's not from my if it's not my wife or my children, mm. you would hardly get anything from me. You can't even get any for anything from me. Ah, even if it's your you brothers know, or your sisters. I, I, I don't care. I don't care because you know I lost my mom when I was barely nine years old. Okay. And um, my dad was married, and my grandparents basically took care of us. Okay. But then my grandmom at an early age mm. made me understand that even though she's taking care of me mm. or us. Mm. That, we are not obligated to, to take pay care her back. You hmm. get understand? We are not obligated to do or anything for her. We should focus our attention on our own family. Hmm. So the moment, right from secondary school, I was working. I was working, um, helping um, my uncle with um, his traveler's check business. Then, okay. got into the university, Open State University. I was working in a cyber cafe. Okay. I worked from my hundred level till I graduated. Okay. Then finished school, got a job, and. Barely two months after getting a job, my dad called me and was like, send me money to pay school fees for my step siblings. And I, I, I asked him point blank. I can't forget that I was in front of an American embassy on a bike. I told him, I said, stop. I said, this man, you did not pay my school fees. Why are you asking me to send you money to pay for school fees? Tell them to go and work. Because I worked from secondary school until I finished university. I can't send you money. Mm. You know? Mm. And I hung up the phone. So you can't even get from me. Just some years ago, I came back from the village. Mm-hmm. My uncle, one of my dad's and brother, lost his, his mom. I'm sorry. And he kept calling me like I was phoning him. Like calling my phone left, right, and center, send me money, send me money. You know, I just gave him 5,000 naira. And then he was asking me, like, every week you go out with your children, you do this, you do this. We see you on Facebook, we see you on um, Instagram, and you're giving me 5,000. I said, that's what I can afford. Then on here. I mean, I'm sure you, I don't. I don't know if you got uh, someone sent you a message on Twitter um, asking you to join him and his family in Cactus once. Yeah, yeah, I Sorry. remember. Yeah, that was me. Oh, that was, was you. Hi. Oh, yeah, <laughs> Hi. <laughs> you know, so my whole hundred percent is for my wife and my children. I mean, my younger sister called me once and I said, "Loan me hundred k." I said, "Can you call my wife to loan me hundred k because I don't have to loan, even though I have." But I said, "Call my wife." You know, but you know they'll because say your I wife is the problem. They, not like they will say. They always say that, and I don't care. Mm. You know, the thing is, the moment you start thinking of what people would say, mm. that's like emotional blackmail. And I've thank God bless my grandma. She made me understand that look, whatever anybody says, always do that thing which is in your heart. Mm. The moment I finished school, she didn't even let me have. One year to even play around, like she said, oh, you must marry. I need to see my great grandchildren before I die. <laughs> you know, and she never even disturbed me for one day. Um, and when I want to drink, and I want this, so I want to be quiet. You know, she never, you know, I don't tell you why someone will come and tell me. You know. My step siblings, I didn't give, I, I can tell you, I, I, don't, I don't think I spent more than 50k in more than in up to five years while they were still in school or something, even while some of them are still in school. Mm. I wouldn't give you, I mean, if you call me, I tell you to go get a job. I mm. paid my way through, I paid my way through school, from secondary school to university. See, did anybody who went to go State University would say, this guy that can CBG, I worked in CBG for five years. I would not come and tell me to give you money. You tell me there's no job. You must go and get, get, I was cooking for people in school. I was, I'm a man. I go to market in school. Cook for people, get paid. How about your wife's relatives? Do they call and ask for money? Do you tell them the same things? They, they, they don't even call me. I don't care what my wife does with her money. Hmm. Do you understand? Okay. They, they don't, they can't, all I need, like December, Christmas or New Year, I can just package stuff and send. Hmm. But what my you... wife, my wife knows that nobody, her husband, you cannot blackmail me emotionally. And my wife is that kind of person too. <laughs> you know, like my wife and I know. I mean, I can tell you if each time people call me, mm. sometimes I document. I mean, I can if I begin to tell you how much I've been able to save for my children in their account. Mm. 
these are monies that would have been given, throwing out, like trying to win family favors or for, for them to say that my wife is not controlled. Oh, my wife controlled me. Yes, thank you very much for calling. Kunle from Ekpe says, Sandra, these people complaining about paying black tax should tell the whole truth. Don't they enjoy being treated like kings? It has its benefits. They become the lord of the family. Wow, really? Kunle, thank you very much for your message. And then uh, I, uh, somebody replies, Mr. Mwigwe, and said, Mr. Mwigwe, black people chose the name black tax. So clearly... There are some people who disagree with you. All right. Thank you very much for sending your message in. We've got uh, messages on Twitter. This one, Square Flix says, it's eating deep into us. It's the cause of depression. I feel that at the end of it, it makes you bet bitter and angry at life. In a typical African home, we have four to nine children with no tangible resources to take care of them. How do we grow? How? We've got uh, more messages coming in on Twitter. Chook says he's really enjoying the show and the topic. Uh, individuals always reaching out to family is so crazy. Honestly, I'm praying all my life. I was trained by my parents to take care of my siblings. Now I'm taking care of them as well. Jonathan says, I cannot watch my parents and siblings starve or not go to school because I want to build generational wealth. The easiest way to build generational wealth is to give your siblings good education in a nation where the government is responsible for nothing. Jonathan, thank you for your message. Chidema is in a good state. Hello, Chidema. Hello, Sandra. Thank you for calling. So, I, I, I don't really think this is a, a, like a, a general topic per se because I have friends who are in this same uh, country who's, who don't have this problem. So, I think it's the that, like, how the family sets it off that causes the problem. Okay. Now, for instance, you have parents who were giving, 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 and didn't establish anything for mm -hmm. the family, you get? Mm -hmm. So, of course, you can't come out of that family and not help your siblings. Mm -hmm. You understand? Okay. And so it's kind of like like a, a, an emotional something. Like, you can't just help. Mm -hmm. You have to do it. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, it's not like those parents are not making money. Mm -hmm. But they were busy helping, helping. So they were even borrowing money. To but help. they didn't do anything for the family. Mm -hmm. So... That's why, like last caller, you have to make up your mind and know that anything you are giving, you're not giving your family own because nobody will take care of your family. Hmm. When the chips are down, all those people who you you are helping, nobody will come back. Hmm. Okay. All right, Chidima. Thank you very much for calling. You know, last week I did mention that there's also an angle to this black tax thing. So say, for instance, you and your sibling. Your parents did everything they could for you guys. They sent you to the best schools, gave you the best pocket money, raised you the right way. But for some reason, only one of you succeeded at life and the other one continues to collect money from your parents, refuses to work, refuses to do anything. And now your parents are dead. And the only way that sibling knows how to survive is to collect money from the parents. Do you, would you feel an obligation to help them as well, to pay their bills, to give them money to stay afloat? Or would you say, would you be right to say that you had the same opportunities I did? You were raised in the same house I, as I was. You were given the same opportunities to succeed as I was. I took it seriously. You didn't take it seriously. So the life you're living now is the consequence of your decisions. Would you be right to say that? Or is the right thing to continue to help them out anyway? Give them money, pay their bills, invest in business ideas they bring you away that you know will never amount to anything. What's the right judgment call there? Let me talk to Ovie in Egweda. Hello, Ovie. Thank you for calling us. Thank you very much. Okay, so this is an interesting topic. Uh, I feel like um, what we need to do is to put balance in everything. Okay. Now, this culture itself is not a bad one. Mm -hmm. There are some cultures that we have as Africans that they are not bad in themselves, but it's when you take them to the extreme that they are bad. So you, that you are privileged in a family, helping some other family members, not a bad thing. Mm -hmm. It's now for you to draw the balance. So what I would suggest is, okay, so... I would say, okay, based on my income, what is the percentage I'm going to keep aside to help? 
So if I'm going to keep it 10% or 15%, whatever percent, I'm going to keep it aside to help my family members and that person. Now, when people come, I give from that percentage. Once it's done, I explain to you this is the best I can do, but also not just help anybody. Mm-hmm. While I'm helping you, I want to be sure that you also are ready to work. Sometimes, some people are ready to work. Some mm-hmm. people want to do things, but they don't just have the means to do it. Sometimes you just need somebody to push them with a little investment or a little help. Mm-hmm. Sometimes I just be somebody even telling them that, okay, you know what? You can do this. I did this while I on campus, you can also do it. Okay, take this go start. Mm-hmm. So instead of just taking the money and helping people to be lazy, mm-hmm. I'm going to take the money, help people to do something so that they can be independent. They don't have to come back. Mm-hmm. So more like taking the money to help to teach them how to fish. So, so like I feel Asians. like it's a good culture mm-hmm. that we can take the good side of it and not throw it away. Like I know there's a caller that said it doesn't help at all. Mm-hmm. I feel like, although it's a personal decision, but I feel it's taking it to the extreme. To say I'm not going to help anybody, only my family, my my sibling, um, or rather my wife and my children, I feel like it's not a good example that I want to give to my own children. Mm-hmm. I want to tell them that, okay, we are blessed, we're going to be a blessing to people, but not at our own expense. We're going to invest, we're going to have family money to do all things. We're going to save for the future, but we're also going to help. But isn't, but isn't, not- isn't this all also a privileged argument to make. So say, take for instance your salary. You live in Lagos. Your salary okay. is 70,000 naira or 50,000 okay. naira. And you have okay. this litany of family members that also need help. How much okay. of that will you save for yourself and your family and how much of that will you set aside to help extended family? If you're earning that amount of money, do you also still owe an obligation to extended family members? Okay, so I wouldn't call it an obligation. I just work with this principle that if I'm blessed at, at any level, mm. I can still be a blessing. So even if it's a 70000 if I'm going to work with percentage, mm-hmm. let's assume, the same way some people feel that they need to give God 10% of their money, which is tight. Mm. And they do it and they survive with the remaining 90%. Mm-hmm. So I can decide that even if it's 5%, even if it's 10 even if it's 2%, mm. I'm going to keep. And I will let the person understand that, see, I would love to help you as much as I would, but you see, this is the money that I kept aside to help, and mm. that money has been exhausted. If maybe next month you come, I may be able to help you, but I would just tell you that I also want to see how I can also help you. Sometimes not just only the money, sometimes even being involved, mm. asking them questions. Okay, why don't you do that? I just feel like, let's not just turn our backs and say, I'm not going to help you. I'm not going to do that. And also, let's not just help and feel like I must help because if I don't help, they will kill me. Live your life for yourself. Don't live your life for people, but also it's a good culture that we can. Because if you look at it, mm. now, we know that it has made some people poor mm-hmm. by them going to the extreme. But I also feel that like it doesn't help some families so if some people were not helped, they won't be where they are today. Hmm. But it's just to draw the balance. Draw the balance, he says. Thank you so much, Ovie, for calling. Lagos, I, I want to give you a chance to win 10,000 Naira. I'm really enjoying this conversation. I'm really enjoying it. I feel like we need to um, talk about it one more time. I, I don't know. I'll, I'll have to have a conversation with my producer and see what uh, my producer thinks. <laughs> But I'm really enjoying it. Um, and you obviously are because my phone lines have not stopped ringing since we started talking. But um, I need to give you some money for your trouble. So let's uh, listen to our sponsors, Credit Ville, and then give away 10000 air meet up your goals for the year, then here's the good news. Goals are easily achieved by choosing Creditville as a reliable credit assistance. Creditville is accessible and reliable at all times. With Creditville, interest rates are affordable, repayment plan is flexible, disbursement is processed within 24 hours. These and many more are the reasons why you should choose Creditville as your accessible and reliable financial partner. For more information, log on to www.creditville.ng. You can also send us an email via info at creditville.ng and you can give us a call on 080-55100010. Creditville Loans. Investment. Leasing. All right, let's give you a chance to win 10,000 Naira. The lucky man or woman will walk away with that money. Hello, thank you for calling us. Hello. Hello. Okay, it's your unlucky day. 99.3, hello. Hello. Thanks for calling. What's your name? Um, hello? Hello, what's your name? Um, my name is um, Temi Tokwe. Temi Tokwe, good to have you on the show. Your time starts now. This is just a minute. On what date will the glass ceiling convention hold? On 7th of March. From what country is the keynote speaker of Glass Ceiling Convention? 
USA. Which U.S. state did the, the Democrats flip to take the Senate? Georgia. Who started her new job today? Um, uh, uh, yes, yes. Equity. Yes, say that again. What, what did you say uh, first? What did you say first? I think Koja will like. Equity. Yes. So which one is it? Okonje Wala or Ekwesili? Willa. Iwala is correct. When will Nigeria Willa. get its first COVAX shipment? Um, that's two days from now. Two days from now? Yes. Two days from now is wrong. It's tomorrow. In what oh. state were 317 girls just kidnapped? That's um, Zamfara. What was the name of the police operation launched in April 2019 to fight kidnapping in the north? Wolf Ada. Stay on the line. You may just be our winner today. Stay on the line. Don't hang up, all right? So we get your details. Okay. So let's see. How many did you get right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven questions correctly. I'm going to cross-check to make sure that you are, in fact, um, our winner. Hopefully, nobody answered uh, more questions than that. But Lagos, my producer says, yes, we can continue this conversation. Yes. I'll tell you when, because tomorrow we have a Jirin Gelali coming at five. He'll be talking to us about Nigeria's plan to concession a lot of our infrastructure um, and uh, get private sector involved to work on them. I'm Sandra Ezekwesili on social media. Sandra Ezekwesili on Facebook, S. Ezekwesili on Twitter, S. Ezekwesili on Instagram. We've got uh, conversations with Ufai coming up next after the news at 6. Yvonne is here to bring that to you. Those were your hard facts, Lagos. Have yourself a good, good night. Thank you. 99.3 Nigeria Info. Entertaining and informing Nigeria 24-7. 99.3 Nigeria Info. We are more than just radio. Subscribe to our YouTube channel at Nigeria Info FM. Check us out on Facebook at Nigeria Info 99.3. Follow us on Twitter at Nigeria Info FM and on Instagram at Nigeria Info FM Lagos for live updates as it happens. 99.3 Nigeria Info. Let's talk.